Hello, BookTube. This is Weekly Reads. Um, this past reading week has been particularly bad. Um, so let's get going. So I started the reading week um, with the intention of focusing on uh, two fantasy novels. On a Pale Horse by Pierce Anthony and Their Sorcerer's Son by Phyllis Eisenstein. Um, On a Pale Horse is an urban fantasy novel about a feckless young man who accidentally kills death and has to replace him. Um, while this young man is death, he has to deal with the machinations of Satan or some similar archdemon who's doing something. Um, I really did not like this book, um, or what I've read of it. Um, the first chapter, the first scenes, it's just so, so bad. And I'm like, Nope. So then I moved on to Sorcerer's Son. Uh, this is a heroic fantasy novel about a young man named Cray who is the son of a sorceress and he believes his father was a young knight who came to his mother's castle seeking um, AIDS. He was grievously injured in a fight earlier in his adventure. Um, in actual fact, um, Cray's father is a rival sorcerer, rival sorcerer to his mother who proposed marriage to her and she rejected him. And in a weird spate of paranoia, thought she was going to move against him. So to protect himself from that he came up with the idea, or was led into the idea, to create a shirt that would be proof against her magic and to prevent her from preemptively attacking. Basically, he was told that in order that one way for her powers to be weakened for a bit is for her to become pregnant. So, the whole seduction thing via one of his pet demons. Uh, Cray grows up. Um, wanting to be a knight for some reason um, and then goes off to become a knight and find out what happened to his father and then later apparently he does train to become a sorcerer. Um, I, I mean I guess the book is okay except for there's one bit that really ticked me off and the style, it's, it's not really my taste. It's sort of, it's very reminiscent of fairy tales. And it's sort of tries to be poetic, but never quite gets there. It's that, I mean, this is really weird style that was quite popular, it seems, in the 70s and 80s. Um, and I just... Um, it was okay, I guess. Although I did rather enjoy sort of the bits about the two sorcerers. Of course, that the main character is not neither one of them. And just that bit of where Cray wants to become a knight, even though, except for it... Uh, just, yeah, no. So then after that, I moved on to not fantasy. I'd mentioned last week that I'd also in mind to read a um, French novel that I've had for a few years now and haven't quite gotten to, and that is And Their Children After Them by Nicholas Matthew, translated by William... Redmore? Let me see if I can find it. Rodemore. Yeah, Rodemore. Uh, this is a French novel set in the 1990s. 
it's about two teenagers, cousins, um, over, or that, okay, let's rephrase. So it's about two young Frenchmen uh, cousins over the course of about six years in the 1990s. So it starts in 1992 and ends in 1998, I think. Um, and it's basically about them growing up. The book starts with um, the two cousins going to uh, stealing a canoe so they can go to a nearby nude beach, which, yeah, doesn't exactly go the way they expect. Although, likely for them, they don't really have any consequences for stealing the canoe. Um, and then it kind of goes from there. There's a party later. They still, uh, one of the, the main characters, father's bike. It's just, I really didn't particularly get on with it. I thought, well, the style's okay. I just, it didn't really connect with me. And the fact that the cousin up to the point I bailed didn't have a name. It was always just my cousin, even though the cousin's sister was named and the cousin's mother, the main character's aunt, was named. The cousin wasn't. It just, I mean, yes, I understand there's a bit of an idolization here, but you would still name your cousin. Anyway, that kind of annoyed me, so I built on this one, too. <sighs> hmm. And then on Sunday, A Glutton for Punishment, I decided to read um, or try out some novels by Sam Sykes. Sam Sykes is a, a fantasy writer who, or fantasy author, um, whose works are borderline uh, sword and sorcery to hero fantasy with some grim dark. Um, so I, I've been wanting to read, or I've had this book for like mm, six years, and I've been wanting to get to it. Well, I've had it for six years, and I really need to get to it, not necessarily wanting to get to it. Um, although I have wanted to get to it for a while because it came out in the late 2010s as part of a brief resurgence of sword and sorcery. And so I picked it up. It took me forever to finally get it, and then it took me even about as long to finally read it, or at least look at it. And that is Tome of the Undergates. This is book one of the Eons Gates trilogy. And it's about a cast of ne'er-do-wells uh, seeking uh, like a magical tome or magical object. Uh, I wouldn't know because I basically barely got past the prologue, which is one of the worst prologues I have ever had the misfortune of reading. It's in the form of a diary entry, and it's the worst, the most unbelievable diary entry. It's just nobody on this, nobody in this world would write a diary entry like that. And certainly nobody in any fantasy world would write such a diary entry either. It's just, no. And then the actual start of the story, it's so oh, badly done. Just, I mean, I just know. So then I tried um, the first book in um, Sam Sykes' most recent series. I think he's he has three series. Um, and this is his most recent one, unless he's already finished it. This is uh, book one of the Grave of Empires series. It's Seven Blades in Black. And it's about um, a young woman who's part of a secret elite um, force having been captured and being interrogated. Um, and I just, Sam Sykes' writing hasn't improved that much. Needless to say, all that I can say about that. 
<sighs> so then I'm, I don't know why, but I decided to uh, go have another go at um, Heroic Fantasy. It's a, This is an anthology of Heroic Fantasy short stories from the late 70s, maybe into the early 80s, but certainly in the 70s, edited by Gerald W. Page and Hank Reinhardt. I've never quite gotten on with this um, anthology. The first story, Sand Sister by um, Andre Norton, has always sort of, I've always bounced off of it. The style just is that kind of fairy tale 1970s, 1980s style that doesn't quite connect with me, um, except for maybe Tenneth Lee. But I decided to have another go at it. Um, and so I looked at a few stories from here. Um, I had another go at Sin Sister by Andre Norton. It's about a young uh, woman. It's one of the Witch World stories. And it's about a young woman who doesn't quite fit with her tribe. And so one day she's sent out to sort of find herself. And it just, I didn't care for it. And it went on a little too long. Uh, I also looked at uh, The Valley of the Shadows um, by Galad Elflinson. That is absolutely a name for a fantasy writer. <laughs> and it's about two pirates who... Um, are stranded in medieval Scotland and they come upon a fantastic location and one of them dies and it's just bad. Um, and pretty much like most sword and sorcery stories ever. Um, the Murderous Dove by Tenneth Lee I thought was quite good. It's about a, an assassin who is driven to kill the a branch leader of a specific order and how he's outwitted and it's that's quite good i quite like that one and i also looked at demon song by f paul wilson and the seeker in the fortress by manly wade wellman um demon song is about um a barbarian who undertakes a commission to go kill a random sorcerer who's acting up, I guess. Um, and it's just bad. And then The Seeker in the Fortress is basically about a um, barbarian who's also a troubadour who decides to go rescue a princess from an evil sorcerer who's being besieged. And again, eh, both of them are bad. And just like your standard, yeah. Uh, like there's no, it's just your basic fantasy story. And I'm just, <sighs> yeah, that was a, horrid bit of my weekend um and it got me so depressed regarding science fiction and fantasy that I was sorely tempted to just purge all of them because yeah because as much as I've talked about the past few years um having something happened in late 2019 and through 2020 and 2021 and now into 2022 that um, I just I've struggled with fiction and really it's not so much fiction as it is science fiction and fantasy there's just so few works of science fiction and fantasy do I enjoy reading now and I, and it's frustrating because science fiction fantasy 
is my favorite genre of fiction. And while the novels and short stories that I've been reading don't really bear that out, um, since I'm pretty much bailing on practically all of them, but I mean, if you would look over at my manga shelves, they're all science fiction and fantasy. More fantasy than science fiction, as I prefer fantasy over science fiction. But still, I mean, it's still my favorite genre. It's still the genre I creatively think about. But it's just, I'm not getting on with pretty much anything I'm reading, and it's, it's frustrating. And probably would bear a... Um, video on its own and if I can ever work out how to adequately do that video I will um, but there were some bright spots to my reading week um, on Monday I did finish up the most uh, the most recent issue of National Geographic and I actually liked two of the um, articles in there. There was one on Native Sovereignty that I thought was really good. And um, the Urbanized Wildlife, that was really good as well. So that was pretty good. And I also had the brightest spot of my reading week. I read um, Volume 1 of Hell's Paradise. Um, Jigoku Raku by Yuji Kaku. This is a seinen um, manga series. Uh, so seinen is aimed at an adult male audience, whereas shonen, which is the manga genre that I mostly read, is more young adult, I guess you could say. Um, but Hell's Paradise is about a young ninja named Kebimaru or Kabimaru the Hollow, who has been betrayed by his uh, village of Ibagakure, um, and he's set to be executed. However, um, the magistrate tasked with his with overseeing Kabimaru's um, execution has failed repeatedly. Every method of execution, increasingly more torturous, more imaginative fail. They've tried beheading him. They've tried burning him alive. They've tried tearing him apart by horses. They've tried boiling him until they eventually um, bring in a young woman from a clan specializing in executions, a Sigiri, who finally figures out that as much as Kibimaru claims he wishes he wants to die, he doesn't really want to. He actually wants to see his wife again. And so she offers him a way out, a way to see his wife again. She offers uh, a pardon from the Shogun. Um, the series takes place during the Edo period. But there's a catch to this pardon. Gabumaru has to travel to this um, mysterious island that has recently been discovered that appears to be um, paradise. Um, but this paradise is very much a hell on earth. And Gebimaru and Sekiri, um travel with a number of other condemned criminals and their um, executioners to try to find this, the elixir of life, which is reputed to be on this island. And pretty much not all of them will survive. And I just, I really enjoyed this volume. Um, I thought it was, um, I love the artwork. I love the characters. I mean, I love the character design. Like, this is Kebimaru. Um, I love, like, the action scenes. There. And this is um, Sajiri. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this, and I'm, Really looking forward to uh, picking up more volumes of Hell's Paradise in the coming months. <sighs> so that's pretty much my reading week. Um, now, I did manage to take some time to 
do a few other things, and my reading week has been disrupted. Um, so I did rearrange my library. Um, I moved uh, this bookcase here that my brother made um, over some. And then I and I cleaned it up and I fixed the um, second shelf or the penultimate shelf, this shelf right here, uh, which has um, the sort of uh, the brackets that my brother originally put on there didn't really hold up. So the shelf itself tended to sag. And I finally got around to um, putting some like stronger brackets on there with the hope that it will eventually, the shelf will straighten out. Um, and I didn't burn myself this time. I figured out how to actually operate a drill and I had the sense to wear gloves. So I didn't burn myself like the last time I tried to fix that bookcase. And then I moved my nonfiction bookcases, this one here, this one here, and this one here, over some so that there's a, even though there's still a little space right here, it's only a little bit. And it's like a much tighter, much more closer fit right there that I really like. And it also opened up some space over here for eventually another bookcase, which I'm hoping will be a general, a general fiction bookcase. Um, basically, these three bookcases here will all, ideally all be history. Although, as circumstances dictate, this bookcase here could also be history. And then I'd have to figure out what to do with the general nonfiction. Um, I've also, again, my reading week's been a bit um, disrupted because um, I've been having to watch the Four Children of the Apocalypse uh, during my reading period, and that's kind of been a bit disruptive. Um, but that's kind of coming to an end uh, because the fifth, uh, well, it won't be the four children of the apocalypse, it'll be the five children of the apocalypse, or I'll have to find a new uh, nickname for them. Uh, so my brother and sister are expecting uh, another baby. I'll have soon three nieces and two nephews. And they've scheduled um, the delivery of my new niece uh, for uh, the... August 3rd so that'll be something um yeah so there'll be that so this coming reading week and a little bit into the first week of August I'll pretty much be watching the four children of the apocalypse some more then too um and then after that uh I think I probably won't have to watch them except for like doctor's appointments and stuff like that but anyway I also, um, in addition to working on the nonfiction shelves, I did some work on um, science fiction and fantasy. I moved uh, the A's up through the B's uh, to uh, a wall shelf above that are that's above sort of the wall of science fiction and fantasy, and then I moved um, the science fiction and fantasy kind of over so that they are now as much as I can kind of in what I ideally see as a science fiction fantasy sort of footprint although that footprint is likely going to whittle away um, again I just I don't know what it is it's just science fiction fantasy is not doing it for me right now and I do need to clear out some space and they're the most obvious candidates. So I'll probably be doing some unhaul videos once I figure out the mechanics of how I'm going to start doing some unhauling. But anyway, so that's that. And let's talk about uh, what I'll be reading this coming reading week. I, I'm going to be reading uh, some history. First up is A Bill Redemption. I'm going to have another go at The Road to d and Foo by Christopher Gosha. This is a history of the First Vietnam War, uh, the War of Vietnamese Independence from uh, France, and how this war 
kind of leads up to the more famous Vietnam Vietnam War between North Vietnam, South Vietnam, and South Vietnam's patron, the United States. Um, so I read this, or had to go at this in May, and I rather liked it, but I think the book fell, fell victim to a meltdown I had when I was reading it. So hopefully I will have better success this time. And after I finish um, uh, The Road to DMB and Fu, I'm planning on reading 1177 BC, The Year Civilization Collapsed by Eric Klein. This is the history of um, the event that um, saw the collapse of the Bronze Age. And I've been meaning to get to this book for quite a while. And I'm really looking forward to reading it because um, the Bronze Age is one of my favorite periods of history. I wish there were more books on it. So that's what I'll hopefully be reading this coming reading week. Um, so for this coming last week of July, um, there are a number of tag videos I would like to do. Um, there's particularly one going on about penguins. There's one about... Um, books I you really want. There's a Stranger Things tag and a few others. So there's quite a few tags I want to get to this coming uh, week. Um, I also would like to contemplate um, my science fiction and fantasy collection and really sort of do a deep dive into what exactly it is that just isn't working for me anymore and why that is and also beginning to the process of i think clearing out a not insignificant part of my science fiction and fantasy collection um how much that is i don't know but we'll see although i have to say not a whole lot of um, what's coming out science fiction and fantasy rise has appealed to me but Anyway, um, and then of course on Friday, I will be doing uh, weekly reads. In addition, I'll also be doing my July book haul, uh, which is immense. And I'm going to have to figure out the mechanics of how I'm going to put those books into my personal library catalog um, before I film. I'll probably do like pull the books down and try to get them put in there uh, Friday morning and then have the books organized by genre for when I do the haul itself, which will be during kind of this period of filming, the 12 to 12.30 to 1. And then Friday evening, next Friday evening, I will be doing uh, weekly reads. So yeah, and then I'll talk a bit about August reading plans next Friday. Um, I'm hoping I can do um, a bit of Garb August in August, but I don't know if that's going to work. Um, I'll try to see how that's going to work. And then I'm, of course, also going to be doing my back to school reading project. So anyway, so how all that goes, but I'm starting to ramble and I'm going to go ahead and end the video here. So thank you booktube. Have a great rest of your afternoon and evening and weekend and I will see you probably on Tuesday uh, with a tag video. So until then booktube thank you and stay safe.